Welcome to This Week in Warframe, a series where I keep you updated on the past week of Warframe. From announcements made by DE that don't necessarily warrant their own videos to community fan art posts and updates. So without further ado, let's go over these announcements and news from the 14th of October to the 20th. Starting this week's episode off, we have Deathstream 118. First off, they showed concept art for the Atlas Deluxe skin. Looks pretty damn sweet, just like the previous Nidus and Nezha Deluxe, made by the same person. Now, they did confirm that there won't be any new Operator abilities coming with Fortuna. However, there will be Operator Amps coming with Fortuna, and later down in the line, we'll have new Operator Hair in December. At least, that's the timeline of what they've presented. Now, before I go further, Fortuna, they have said they do want to get it out in the first week of November, but we all know DE, and that's probably not going to happen, and it'll be later in the month, but their timeline is for early November. They did show us a new little UI option. We will be able to customize and choose our focus classes from the Arsenal menu. They also talked about and gave us a little bit of information about upcoming reworks, those being Nyx and Titania. So what they've talked about with Nyx's abilities is the following. First off, she'll have a new passive where it will debuff the enemy's accuracy. Mind Control will also have a charge mechanic much like Foss Snow Globe where you place down the ability, in this case you mind control the target, you'll have around 4 seconds to build as much damage onto the target that will convert into that target's damage output. As for Psychic Bolts, that will be changed to a debuff duration based ability. As for Chaos, that will stay the same, however there will be some math changes and damage type changes which we've known about previously. As for Titania, they'll be adding Vacuum to the Razor Wing mode, Tribute will also have an instant buff instead of it needing to be stacked, and Lantern, they've increased the target count to 4, and you can also straight up kill them by holding down the button. They also want to add solo extraction to game modes that don't have it, however the way Rebecca replied to this question seems like it won't be happening anytime soon. Anyway, moving on, they also showed us some stats regarding companion usage. Helios Prime being the most used companion, and then the Ruska Kubra being the least used. Right after that, they gave us the announcement that a fetch mod will be coming to Beast Companions, and this is their version of the Vacuum mod, so we finally have the ability to have Vacuum on our Beast Companion. However, it's still not Universal Vacuum, but I guess this is the best we're going to get. Also relevant to companions is that they showed off Moa companion creation. Now they did show off two precepts. The first is lift. It will lift enemies up after a projectile has been sent out towards them. And any enemy within that projectile's one meter radius will be lifted up and then slammed down for 20 impact damage. Now these mods are unranked and of course they are in a work in progress state. So these can be changed at a later date. There is also tether that sends out a grenade and it tethers enemies within 10 meters and after 3 seconds all of those affected units will be pulled towards the grenade and knocked down. It does sound similar to the Void Class Grenade from Destiny, that seems like a cool companion preset. There will also be the ability to change the animation sets of your mower, giving it different somewhat personalities with its animation sets and sounds, however the default animation for the mower moving can't be changed. And of course they will have weapons, they just didn't show them in the dev stream. Now as we have known, Fortuna will bring the bounty system outside of the default location, that being Fortuna, and instead will have bounty vendors in the Orb Valis. They gave us a little showcase of that, as well as a bit of information that bounties will be changing, giving us a bit more variation in what we have to do, so it will give us a bit of variety and that should be good. During that bounty that they ran though, we did see a bit of the notoriety system, how upon killing more corpus units, it will boost our notoriety up and more corpus units will attack us. So that was a nice little segment. If you want to see anything in the true dev stream state, I'll leave a link to everything in the description down below as usual. Now for those wondering about the cave system, and if they're just going to be some empty slot like they are in the Plains of Eidolon, they did mention this and they did talk a bit about it saying that the caves will have unique bodies of water inside of them that will contain unique fish. So there is a purpose behind them. Now we did mention this in the previous episode, that mining changes will be coming to the game, and they gave us a full HD preview of that in this dev stream. So if you did not watch that video, there won't be a tracing system anymore. Instead, you have to hold down the mining tool and release it at specific points to get rarer or increased rewards. They were also asked and answered 
what happened to the proto weapon skins that they mentioned earlier in the year, and it seems none of them know what happened to them and why they weren't released, so we'll have to wait and see if they do eventually come into the game, but we have no information and it seems they don't have any information about them at this point in time. Now for those asking about running and sprint animations, and if there will be changes coming to those at any point, they don't have the time at the moment, but eventually they'll get to it and there'll be changes to that. On to Garuda. So her passive increases her damage output the lower your health goes. Her first ability, upon casting it on an enemy, it will tear them apart and summon an orb as well as a shield. The second ability, upon casting on an enemy, you impale them and you create an AoE that drains life from them and it heals you. As for the third ability, casting it will lower your health, mutilating the player, and it will also give you energy based on the amount of health that was drained from you. As for the fourth ability, the player goes into an AoE form and sends blades out towards enemies. It seems much like Irelia, if I'm correct on that, on that character's choice from League of Legends, but that will be what her ability set is, that being Garuda. She'll also come with a crossbow, which they showed off, but it was unmodded and did seem to be in a very work in progress state. So she'll come with a crossbow, and that will be one or the only item coming with the router, which will also be coming with Fortuna. And finally, for those wondering about the Corpus Gas City tile set remaster that will be coming after Fortuna, we've mentioned it here before, but for those that don't know, after Fortuna, just like Melee 3.0. That concludes Devstream 118's overview, so let's move on to the events that came out through the week. So first off, the Day of the Dead event in Warframe is live, and players can pick up a number of Day of the Dead collections from the in-game market, as well as the one-credit Halloween color palette. So if you want colors, and you have none, you have no platinum, get the color palette, because it's only one credit. There is also the return of the Hallowed Nightmares Tactical Alert. All of these items run up until November 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, for the Hallowed Nightmares Tactical Alert, you won't have any weapons, and your Warframe will be reduced to 100 health and shields, or 50 health and shields in the last section of the Tactical Alert state, and you'll have to destroy the Pumpkin Mask in order to kill the Juggernaut. Now, on PC, we had numerous hotfixes throughout the week, First was Hotfix 23.10.3, which restricted the use of duplicate gear items in the gear wheel, with the exception of the Dragon Keys, because they're leaving it as it is, allowing players to do single-player vault runs. They also made some AI fixes, which fixed the flow of enemies in certain game modes and rooms, and that's going to follow on through each of these hotfixes, which I'm about to go through. As for the fixes in this hotfix, they're up on the screen, and moving on to the next hotfix. So in 23.10.4, Revenant's Reeve will now follow the reticle. They've corrected the infested charger jump down animations and they balanced and updated some of the sounds. Fixes once again went out to the AI. In Hotfix 23.10.5, they did add an auto install button to the Iatan sculptures. However, for some stupid fucking reason, they decided to make it only for Mastery Rank 10 plus players. Pablo did reply to a tweet about someone just going, why the fuck is there a mastery rank thing with what's on your screen? I mean, really? It's fucking stupid no matter what. You're locking something for the UI behind the fucking mastery rank. But hey, let's move on. They also added an ability to swap your mod loadout order in the arsenal, just like they did in the main line where you can switch your cosmetic slots. And they also added the decoration which wasn't put in the main line update, and that is the note beacon, which is placing text in your orbiter or your dojo. Now this comes in the form of a 35 platinum purchase. It's not free, and you will have to purchase the node itself. There is a character limit, but you can also change the color of the text, the size of the text, and you can rotate it as well. You can see it on your screen right now. They also added an effect to the energy orb dropped by Death Cube's energy generator augment. As for the changes, they reverted the operator suit mesh, which was introduced in the mainline update. However, it will come back in the future, just with less bugs. Vigorous Swap will now deactivate when an ability is active, such as Mace's Peacemaker and Valkyrie's Hysteria. They improved tech spacing in the squad panel UI, and they adjusted the daily tribute transmission tech scale. Once again, AI fixes went out. In Hotfix 23.10.6, they made improvements towards the Bumbler spawning underground while fighting the Terrorist and Hydralist on the plains of Eidolon, they removed the unnecessary error prompt when cancelling a Catalyst or Reactor's installment. They removed the Platinum price being listed in the Weapon Selection screen when crafting a weapon that requires another weapon. 
They updated the terminology for the power donation mods read ability strength instead of power strength. They also removed outdated design council tips from the loading screens and they removed placeholder tags from clan activities in the chat. Once again, there were AI fixes. Moving on, there was the announcement of a new contest in Carberry Premiere and players can now create some posters, whether it's through Photoshop, photo manipulation, or just using in-game capture tools. There will be two different placements for winners. There'll be one for screenshot posters as well as art posters. Now, first place will get the Chroma Prime access as well as a signed and shipped version of their poster that's signed by the DE team and that'll be shipped out to you. Second place will get 1000 platinum, third place 750 platinum, fourth place 500, and fifth place 250. As for the rules, they're up on your screen as well as on the forum post. If you are going to enter, make sure to have a full read of it so you don't fuck yourself over. As for the previous contest, the Dojo Remaster contest, where the winners get their dojo showcased on the star chart. The winners are up on your screen as well as on the forum post linked in the description as well as everything else in the description down below. Now on to developer tweets. First off, Steve said that the blood color will be based off of energy color for the router. He also made a shit ton of posts showing screenshots and videos of Fortuna as well as the router's blood. So if you want to have a look at them in the full, make sure to click the links in the description. There's a lot of roaming around the planes single screenshot captures of the locations in the old Valus. I know I just said planes, but it's the Valus. And for those wondering about the concept art with the giant glacier in the sky that they showed when they first started talking about Valus, Steve did reply to someone saying that they're thinking it'll come back in a future event. On to Pablo, he did reply to someone asking about if there'll be the option to move your dojo rooms around freely. He did say it's unlikely to happen anytime soon as there's not enough time and manpower to get it done at the moment. We then had Sheldon tweeting out a little video of the companion Moa reacting and doing the same animation back to an emote and that's a cool little fun thing there. As for community fan art, we have Silfix with the Warframe Inktober post with day 8, day 7, day 6 and day 5. We then have Ally Zombie Face with their Warframe Inktober submission, which is Day 11 Cruel. Same thing goes for Wraith Raz with a Cruel Day 11 Cora post, as well as a Day 8 Star Mirage Prime. Everything I've mentioned in today's video are in the links down below, as well as glyph codes. I've added them to the description. There'll be five here, five on your screen, and then five in a comment as well. They'll all be separate, and uh, that's the only way you're going to get the glyph besides on my Twitter or Twitch. That concludes this week in Warframe. If you found the video informative, make sure to leave a like. If you think I can improve upon the series in any way, shape, or form, make sure to leave it in a comment down below, as well as your thoughts on anything that I talked about here today. If you missed out on last week's episode, make sure to click the annotation on the screen right now. It'll take you right to it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.